a preview of what's to come. Please love me and enjoy my body as you wish. Okay, she's looking sad. This is not it. This is rape. This is not funny. But, remember last episode? We can go to the market? Yeah, Luna, let's go check out some food stalls. I saw some del 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 delicacies that I've never seen before. They're fucking stupid. I can't goddamn read because I'm fucking reading too fast. Bullshit! Let's just get on with it. You know, maybe before I should start these things, I should probably, you know, fix my goddamn congestion, but uh, that's not gonna happen. But hello everybody, my name is Avaris Puma. Welcome back to this episode of Sacred Swords Princesses. Last time we left off, uh, I don't know what happened, so let's just go. The son from the secretary. Ah, he gets ready over there. Well, the person and the others are back too. Everyone seems to have great fun. I've been here for some quite time. Oh god damn it. Did the chief of the squads in Gaia make it difficult for you? Not really. After all, we were in the same class during our day of training at the squads. She understood why I wouldn't pay her a visit on invite if something wasn't important. She would report it to the Empress, but her highness was occupied with other matters. Instead, the Empress instructed her personal secretary Lillian to meet with us. First, especially averse. Upon hearing that we were the vessels, she immediately was able to tell your identity and purpose. Therefore, she'd like to meet you personally and learn a few things from your body. I bet she's trying to learn a ritual from you. But Luna wouldn't have told her. How could she possibly have known? I heard that secretaries are special professionals that only a handful of kingdoms can afford. Even though they don't enjoy some prestige as a priestesses or archbishops, they are known for their knowledge in a wide range of subjects. Our story so far must be known to her. Even though it's no longer a big secret, we better be more di Ugh. we better be more discreet about our roots and hideouts. After all, it wouldn't be ideal if a verse fell into their hands, man. What? You said I'd be ruined. If that's not just ideal. Hmm. Well, let's not try to fall into the hands of our enemies. That's a logical reason. Is that so, Luna? Yeah, ex exactly, man. So am I going to see that secretary alone? Take things as they are. If you fall into that trap, we could simply surround them. I'm sure there's no need to invite that verse. You got a point. Right, I'll go for the sake of everybody. As you've about to sacrifice yourself and for a big cause. Nadalia, the way you look at me makes me sad. I'm making my effort to make everyone a vessel. Okay then, get going now. Nora's, uh, uh, Nora's looking quite uh, sad in the head, like a little, a little sad. We're in the desert, huh? Let's get this over with. It's easier every time. Alright. Give me my stuff. Alright, cool. What's next? Beast encounter. Don't care. Time to speed run this bitch so I don't have to. Well, that was real simple. Alright, let's move on. Gaze behind the glasses. My glasses! Secretary, we got the person you asked for. Oh, it's a person with glasses. 
Secretary. Ah, when did you arrive? You're taking me by surprise. Well, I got here just now. I was speaking to you, but you didn't respond. Hmm. Perhaps I'm still focused on my book. Apologies. A special person traveling with the vessels of the goddess. Is he willing to come? Secretary, he's already here waiting outside. Really? He was all by himself? Yes. Good. I let him in. Understood, Secretary. Look, maybe it was a bad idea for me to go by myself, but you know, we 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 we, we don't take things logically here. We just we don't do this. Led by the attendant, Averse stared around in amazement at an extravagant royal library, which is rich in selection of tomes. He also didn't forget to look at the mysterious secretary. Is that you? Good day. I'm Lillian, secretary of the Kingdom of Gaia. The speaker was an adorable, innocent-looking young girl. She nudged at the frame of her glasses. The big, sparkly eyes set upon Averse with undis undisguised curiosity, and a faint smile appeared on the corners of her mouth. After dismissing the lieutenant, Lillian put uh, wow. She said that, or I'm gonna send the narrator. Lillian put down her tome and walked up to Averse, bringing her with her a calming fragrance of scented flowers. That body looks weaker than the chief of our squad. He has the carry of the mysterious sacred sword? Averse mumbled to himself. That really fucking hurts. In my world, I've known a lot of sacred swords that are weaker than mine. <coughs> yeah, take your clothes. Wow. No, that was that went straight to okay. Here it comes again. After a number of these inspections, Averse felt that shame had long departed from his mind. Unsarized mostly took off his clothes and assumed a nonchalant look as if he was up to telling to help herself. Ah, this body looks special. This is what a man looks like. Her voice is changing by the second here. Lily had ran her fingers over every inch of her versed body with a great curiosity. Those flat, solid chest and tiny nipples, all the way to that thing he protruded from the thing of his legs. The verse felt a quiver of exploring and sensuous touch. That desire was dampened in the streets were kindled like a flame. His mind filled with the urge to make love to this young girl, and his rod was ready for action. This is the sacred sword? Not interested in answering such questions, Avertus grabbed Lillian's hand in his eyes, staring upon her with some magic power. Lillian's body suddenly became warm, and a fit of passion took over her rational mind. Surrender your body to me, and this sacred soul will give you a pleasure that you've never known in your life. As if hypnotized, Lillian's body was weak. She could not only reply in a faint voice. Please love me and enjoy my body as you wish. Okay, she's looking sad. This is not it. This is rape. This is not funny. Indulgence in the library number one. Okay. <sighs> Lean's cheeks were rosy. Her body quivered in the desire. She gently took off her clothes and slipped her into it. Oh, God. I can't read. Just one, two, three, four, shoot. You gave an off day, ooh, the brow grew in the hand, so I'm dead and all that one would be come away from the brow to the keys from all the metal balls. Black and no one, I said. Only met a moment ago, and Lillian's crotch was already soaking wet. Yeah, the undergarments she'd taken off her moist with her sticky juice, giving off a strong scent. Must feel rather good if those paintings were used to well, I okay. I don't enjoy myself at all. Yeah, yeah, that's it. That was awful, awful, bad game, bad game. There is no plot. It is all just. Ugh. It's all just over and over and over again. My character is bugging the fuck out. Well, 
let's uh let's go on with this story that bugs me all to high hell. Things on Honora's mind, number one. I'm back. <clears throat> Where's Honora? How come she's not with you? Honora has been sulky since the moment you went off to see the secretary. Then she said she wanted to take a walk in the garden. Come to think of it, ever since Honora left the kingdom of Athena, she hasn't been the same. Exactly. Honora used to invite me to, fair, to the fair with great enthusiasm. Now she shows no interest in when I try to invite her. Sometimes she has to be bothered to reply to me. Has Trisha said anything wrong? Well, I asked her about it. She feigned a rather stiff smile and said it was nothing. She was really not very good at lying. I see. I guess I'll go ask her about it. I first came to the garden. After a long, long search, she found a Nora crouching in front of a bush of balloon flowers. Her usual optimistic and cheerful self was nowhere to be seen. She was rather melancholic. It was impossible to see that like fog. I like how there's a just massive interlock to the story. It's like, okay, here's the story, and then there's battle. Why don't we just keep the story going so we don't ruin any tension? It's called good story writing. Boom. Let's keep this going. Let's keep the ball rolling. Things on Nora's mind, number dos. Anora, what are you doing all here by yourself? Nora raised her hand and head upon hearing a verse call her name. Her eyes sparkling with joy, but soon died. Have you finished the ritual with the secretary? Yeah. I see. Nora, are you unhappy because of that? Averse, when you have those intimate moments, do you like them? Me, yeah, I like everyone. N no, I don't mean that. I'm talking about real love. Are you in love? Why are you asking? You know that I've come to your world to carry out rituals so that your world can be saved. When you have empty moments with them, that's for the sake of the ritual? You could say that, but I also like everybody. Like everyone. I can't do that. Like, I can only be one person at a time. Or should I say I can only love one person? Love cannot be given to anybody. Love? Rituals like that are called making love in my world. So if you keep doing, you start to feel more and more love. Is that so? That making love require love first. Well, I guess it works both ways. It's also normal to get intimate with someone you love. As for me, because of my mission to carry the Sacred Sword, I really don't have a choice. In that case, do you love anyone? I, I like all of you. As for love, I really can't be sure. After all, I may have to return to my world when my own mission is completed. If you're truly in love with someone, it'll be painful to be separated from her. As a person like in our... Oh, okay, I'm speaking in third person again. <sighs> of course I do. Even though we haven't had the ritual. Even though you can turn into a vessel through the ritual, I don't want to force it on everyone. No, I won't be a force. Oh my god, I hate the third person. What did you say? I didn't quite catch that. Nothing. Do you know the language of the balloon flowers? Not really. If you don't know it, never mind. Lenora looked down cash as she stood up and ran away. Lenora! What exactly happened to her? This is some Star Wars Episode 2 kind of bullshit. It's really somber. It's not good. The plot goes nowhere, and I'm. Oh my god. <coughs> not good. Let me tell you, it's not funny. It ain't real pretty. <laughs> Wow, that was 
symbol. Get that out of my face. At least I'm getting uh, some essence of fire so I can level up everybody. Queen's invitation to the banquet. If the game is not gonna crash on me. The verse, you were supposed to look for Anor. How come she came back earlier than you? Well, that's because... No, I didn't even see Ever. I wanted to stay off the flowers and now I'm back. Huh? So all that talk about looking for an is just an excuse to go fooling around with other women. Well, uh, I mean, you seen right through me. How embarrassing. As long as you're back safe, we just got the invitation from the Empress to join at the royal dinner. Let's get going. Wow, happy dinner with the Empress. I bet some special delicacies are waiting for us. I'm really looking forward to it. Like you, Luna. Uh, oh, exactly, man. <coughs> That voice is killing me. Luna, are you suffering from sunstroke? You've really been absent minded every time I try to talk to you lately. This place is rather hot, man. I made Usher to travel into a dining hall decorated with refined artworks. It was a gauze sir, curtain in front of the throne, delicious food that made their mouth water spread across the table. After everyone was seated, the Empress slowly arose from behind the curtains. She signaled everyone to dispense with formalities and sat down in the imperial seat at the table. Well, that's a rather promiscuous outfit. Vessels of the Goddess, I am Ansharla, Empress of the Gaia. Okay. <laughs> I was able to meet you all to do the duties of my office. Now I have invited you to dine with me. Hope you don't mind trying some of the special flavors of Gaia. May I ask the Empress about the ritual of the altar? You have traveled a long way, must be fatigued and hungry. Please, try these exquisite dishes before they get cold. Servants, supply our guests with more dishes according to their wishes. Yes, your highness. Seeing the assorted delicacies piled up from before them, they can only start eating in silence. This shrimp looks so unusual. What a way to eat it. That's a red-tailed scorpion. One of the specialties of this desert. It needs to be cooked at a high temperature to remove its toxins. The shell is crispy and delicious, and the flesh and its claws are a treat to the palate as well. Yes indeed, this is so delicious, even better than shrimp. <laughs> help yourself to more if you like it. While helping herself with the food in the most elegant manner, Charlotte silently observed the verse who was eating like a hog. The Empress wore a mysterious smile on her face. You look like a belly dancer from what I'm seeing. Miss Cooking Genius. Oh. <laughs> your Highness, the Master Chef has reported she has invented a new dish. She would like to, you and your distinguished guests to try it. Really? Elimania. Elimia. Elimia. Okay. Has got a new idea again. I'm full of expectations. Bring them to us immediately. May have brought a dish with something rather dark on the table and an exotic scent permeated the room. What is that? The shape looks somewhat familiar though. Your Highness, the Master Chef wants you to taste it for us, so he comes out to explain what it is. He merely wants to test me. Huh. <laughs> Take a bite then. Alright, I'll let the guests have it as well. The long creature on the plate was thick as a finger and had skin like black and charcoal, but exotic fragrance away everyone's appetite. They never seemed to use sampling their flavors. She took a bite from the creature and chewed on it carefully. It tastes a bit like desert leeches. That exotic flavor is something I've never had before. It really surpasses... Okay, another voice. Your Highness, this is a true connoisseur and easily pick out the flavor of the desert leeches. What, aren't you the young girl from the desert before? Ah, oh, so you're the guest of the Empress. You've been already. Yes, Your Highness. This day I've been able to present you these delicious desert leeches. What do you mean? These are the leech larvae found on those huge roaming ones in the desert. They have raw and crispy taste, but they need to be partnered with a properly prepared sauce. The other day I realized it was breeding season for the desert leeches, so I went out and searched for them. I bumped these travelers on my way and asked them if they see the creature. When I finally found it, it turned out to be contaminated by the taint. 
contaminated by the tank. In that case, shouldn't these be invincible? I was also surprised to see that the adult leech was not only vanquished, but the taint had departed from his body, and the larvae inside had seemed undergone some subtle changes. They survived when not aggressive. I managed to bring back the larvae and experiment it, but I didn't expect them to taste so good. It's rather odd. Oh, right, I forgot to introduce myself. My name is Amala, this master chef of Gaia. Despite her young age, Amala has a cutie sense of smell. She's known for her passion and delicate. De yeah, my god, I can't speak. <laughs> Dedication to art of cooking. Thanks to her sister's recommendation, I have a good fortune to employ as my master chef. Yeah. You too, Kanya. It's my pleasure to prepare food for you. I'm also grateful for her open attitude and my impulsive style of cooking. I'm fond of trying out different cuisines. Your new flavor of desert leeches is absolutely amazing. Do make more when you have the chance so I can treat my guests with it. As for that, uh, mm -hmm. a has a problem. Uh, no, thank you for your approval, your highness. Yeah, we're fucked in the ass. We're, we're screwed anyway. Okay, how many more chapters do I have to go for this shit? Oh my god, 20. You know what? Oh, I'll keep going a little bit farther for now. In the end, in the end, the emperors didn't answer any questions about rituals throughout dinner. What was you thinking? Perhaps you long defecated to the dark forces. Defecate, defected. Oh my god. It doesn't look like it. You know the beasts attacks are not common here, and they do occur from time to time. But I gotta hunt something isn't quite right. He has a desert kingdom. But as you saw, seeing for yourself, is no less affluent than other realms. The Empress knows how to make her kingdom prosperous. Perhaps after winning the games of the losses, the Empress has succeeded. Like the king of Athena. Oh, messengers of the goddess. Oh, huh. Zelma, what's the matter? Oh, I was wondering, how'd you beat the desert leech that was contaminated by the beasts? <coughs> <coughs> because we are vessels. Oh my god, I can't speak. My fucking voice hurts. The vessels? What are they? I first grabbed Luna from his pocket and asked her to explain. I, I see. You have first to carry the sacred sword. As long as someone's wish one should become a vessel and be very <laughs> exposition. Yeah, that's exactly how it is. In that case, am I qualified? Let me take a look. Emma is gifted with the sacred spirit and uh, she become a vessel without any problem, man. In that case, please have the ritual with me. Voices change every two seconds. Emma, you can become a vessel just so you can be the desert leash that's contaminated by the taint. Not just the desert leeches. They are contaminated creatures. I like to try the ingredients. Who knows? Maybe I cut some of the nails. Like this time with the larvae. My all for some ingredients. <sighs> Don't be so worked up by that. She already just wanted to make her travels easier. So you just have to become a vessel. I prepared the beast on our journey, remember? Each one of us has a different purpose in becoming a vessel. More vessels will bestow us more power. Since even Adalia said so. Well, I should ask him to put up for a while. She'll feel great afterward. Putting up with it? Nothing great. I have no idea what you're talking about, but thank you for agreeing to it. The first second meal was small, and although she was the master chef, her finger was surprisingly smooth. Let's go to your room. It'll be more convenient. Okay. Seeing the two of them leave, and Aura found a bitter lower lip and turned away in silence. And here's the exposition dump, but I do not want to censor this anymore, so, uh, enjoy this. So, I'm going to bed, I feel like crap, so, thanks everybody so much for watching. I'm Avarice Puma, just stay safe and don't get sick.